story of a Midwestern girl who got the opportunity to travel 4,806 miles to Barcelona, Spain, just so she could hang out with her best friend for two weeks. After last week's episode where my friend Juan talked about the typical day of a cat salon, people have been coming up to me saying, I had no idea there was two languages spoke, let alone two different cultures that were residing in Spain. On this week's episode, I'll give you a brief history lesson, because to tell you the truth, neither did I. I was going over there with the little Spanish that I learned from eighth grade and the help of my friend Lily, but I can be more wrong. I thought I'd be fine with that. Nope. They are hoity-toity people, and they did not appreciate me speaking in Spanish to them ordering my food, the one time I actually did. So here's a brief history lesson. It all started in 1640, where the Catalan people rebelled against the Spanish crown for overstepping their rights. Many territories rose up to support Charles VII, Holy Roman Emperor, in his claim for the Spanish throne. This created a little fight between the houses of Bourbon and Hashburg. Let's just say the little fight backfired on the Catalan people. On September 11, 1714, the Bourbon king ordered his military ending the Hashburg claim to the throne. He then introduced the Nova Planta Decree, and this pretty much terminated the separation of institutions and rights, making everyone a united administration of Spain. To make things even worse, this crazy Franco guy came into the picture in like 1939. He hated the Catalan culture so much that he banned certain institutions and even suppressed their language. It got so bad that around 4,000 Catalans were executed between like 1938 and 1953, just for speaking their own native language. Dude was pure evil. But since I've been a complete Debbie Downer, let's go on to another subject. And since Franco was just repulsed by the language, let's talk about that. So both languages are from the Romance family, which pretty much means they share vocabularies, grammatical structures, and some of the same expressions. One main phonetic difference is how the language is written. Spanish is solely phonetic while Catalan is not. This means when you read the word, each letter you see has an accompanying sound. English, for example, is not. Why? Because. In Spanish, there's no Z sound, but in Catalan there is. Often this sound is represented by an S. Catalan uses linkage just like the English language, which means words can change depending on the content. For example, finziet, which is see you soon, creates a Z sound between the words. Catalan shares the L of the Portuguese. The Spanish always had trouble with their Ls, that's why they have a little lisp, and it just kind of transferred over to the Catalan language. It's just not as bad. For example, the word is woman. It's pronounced Mueller, which is like the L-ish sound you make when you say the word million. Now Spanish speaking people are clearly going to have a much easier time learning Catalan because they have the same structure, but along with English speaking people, it should be a little more easier than others because we use linkage. I'm still trying real hard, but I'm not here to teach you that. So that's why we're going to go to our next subject, which is food. And who doesn't love talking about food? Because when you travel somewhere, clearly you want to try the food. You don't want to just try McDonald's or Burger King. Like you can get that here. Why would you want to go to a different country and eat Burger King? Popular Spanish foods include paella, which is a rice dish combined with fresh fish, shrimp, squids, and clams. Another one is tortilla española. It's eggs, potatoes, and onions. If a quiche and an omelet had a baby, it would be this beautiful creation. Croquetas, which remind me of a little wiener dog, but instead you have ham, potatoes, and cheese. And my personal favorite, bravas. The Spanish definitely one-upped us. It's like cheesy fries, but with potatoes. Plus, every restaurant you go to has their own style, so it's different every time, which is really nice. Now, you can get these dishes anywhere in Spain, but since I went to Barcelona, which is the capital of the Catalan people, then I clearly needed to try some of their dishes. And I heard it was like a great mixture of like seafood and meats. This is some of the stuff that they're most known for. Butiparra, which is a type of Catalan spice sausage. You can get it black or white, and it is usually eaten with a piece of bread with tomato or just as a simple tapa dish. Next, you have fideuá, which is the Catalan's version of paella. They just pretty much use noodles instead of rice, but still really good. Last but not least are calchons. These are spring onions cooked by barbecuing them or putting them in the oven. So I can't talk about food anymore because I'm getting really hungry and I can't find any of those dishes anywhere in the United States, let alone Maryville, Missouri. So we're going to talk about traditions. The most known and most controversial is bullfighting. <laughs> 
You might be wondering why I said it was controversial. Well, most foreigners are very curious about this event. I know I was, but once I found out some of the history, I personally wouldn't go to see one of these. I'd rather not watch a man slowly kill a bull for sport. Another well-known tradition is flamenco. The tradition is often misunderstood. It's not necessarily a dance, but it just has some dancing in it. It's actually a type of music style with a big emphasis on guitar, vocals, and rhythm. So I only have one Catalan tradition that I'm going to talk about. Why, you ask? Well, it's a little unique to say the least. It's called Catarires, which in English translation just means castle. It's a human tower. Human tower. They actually hold contests to see who can get the biggest human tower possible and then dissemble the quickest. The assembly is only complete when all the castaires have climbed in their designated places and then a very small person climbs to the top, raises one hand with four fingers erect. This is a gesture to symbolize the stripes on the Catalan flag. Next, this little person climbs down on the other side and the remaining levels, or the people, descend highest to lowest. Unfortunately, in this video, they didn't do it very well. I don't think I could actually watch that. My heart would be pounding the entire time. I don't really understand the concept, so to each their own. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have for this week. Make sure you turn in next time, where I talk about attractions that I went to, and I say what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. But if you can't wait to see this pretty face, then stay tuned and watch Surviving Freshman Year, where I do hoodrat things with my friends. See you next time.